All right, all right, all right. Little 30 minute break back for part two. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this, this little film breakdown part two of Chidoze Wonkwo's performance against the Texas Longhorns this past year. Quick shout out to Ron. Saw that he threw a comment on part one saying, remember Chidoze was playing with a serious angle injury um, that was affecting his lateral quickness specifically. That makes sense. Maybe if he isn't uh, dealing with that, he, for instance, is able to get um, Brooks down on that little screenplay that he sniffed out, right? But um, <laughs> Solid Gold, what's up, man? How are you doing? Hope you're having a good Friday. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen, and we can get back into part two of the Chidoze Wonkwo film. Isn't this great? I love doing this, guys. So uh, please hit that like. Let me know your thoughts as we get rolling here in the comments. And I mean, let's, uh, we can start at 640. Let's just go to this new drive. Okay. Take you guys through all of his snaps. And I, I, I love this. He's going to be a, a great impact player. Definitely an impact player on our defensive line. So we got the second drive, first and 10, okay? Remember, Chidoze right there in the middle, the man in the middle, 5'11", 295. I feel like he's bigger than 295 now. And I mean, look how, how he holds that line. Stuffed. There is nothing up front. Now you see the guys on the edge are able to come in. That's what I talk about, make a tackle, but Brooks is uh, <laughs> is able to break that tackle from that cornerback. Uh, Cormani and Travis aren't going to get played like that, right? That's my hope. But again, let's get another look at it here. He gets a nice little push off the line. Look, I mean, th they aren't able to gain any ground on him right there. No holes. No holes. Facing a little double team as well. And Brooks has to bounce this thing outside. You see number one's coming in here. And this is what, what you're talking about. Like, Chidoze is setting guys up for them to eat, for them to get, um, you know, their points, so to speak. But, man, he does a good job on dodging some tackles, and it actually ends up to be a, a substantial gain. You go to the next play. Second and one. Wow, that was a nine-yard gain. Again, we'll put Chidoze right here in the middle. They're pulling some of their offensive linemen from the right. But again, not a ton of space. You know, that's a gain of three, three, four yards. Again, he's right over here. See, they're just not able to get much from him, man. Uh, he really does hold his ground. He's like a brick wall out there now. Could he... You know, try and get his hands off a little quicker. I, man, I guess, but 25 should come up and make this play, which happens. All right, 7.30, next play. The first and 10. And I think this is going to be another play action. So here's Chidoze. He sees what's going on. Dump down to to Brooks. Gain of like five, six yards. So you'll see he faces like a little bit of a pass rush, you know, or he gives them a little bit of a pass rush. But hey, facing a double team, they're dropping back eight. I think we got another play here. Second and three. Another nice little play action. And, oh, yeah, I think this is a touchdown. 
to Xavier Worthy. <laughs> it's a really nice throw. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. There's Baxter, number four. Yep. <laughs> Not much to say there. Let's see what we got here. 851. This is on that next drive. Oh, yeah, I really like this. Again, this shows you how he can stand his ground. You know, he's not moved off of his line. I like to see this. And, man, come on, Houston, wrap up. There we go. But this is solid. Solid stuff right here. We didn't have anybody on the team last year that could hold their ground like that facing a double team. Beast. Look how he spins off of that as well. It was a real good play by the Cougars defense. All right, we'll go with second and ten. Got 11 personnel. Whittington in motion. And I think we got, yeah, some play action. No. It's a run play. Had me fooled even in uh, .75 speed. But, yeah, this, this angle will give us a better look at how he does here. Nice little tackle there by 20. <laughs> I love the shoving afterwards. All right, third and nine. This should be a pass play, yeah. I got four wide receivers out there. Running back blocking. Of course, Chidoze here in the middle. I'm going to change the play. See, and uh, th I would count this as a pretty good pass rush from him. And then look how he spins out and he's able to pursue your yours. And I mean, this is nice. Stopped. Fourth down, baby. It was a real nice play from him. Again, seeing him collapse the pocket from the interior when you're facing a double team. I mean, that is that's solid stuff. And. I mean, y'all know we didn't really get much interior pressure this past year. Probably Amari McNeil was our best at it. See, I like to see that, man. I like to see not checking out. You got three guys on you right there. And even with that, that injured ankle, man, still pursuing. Love it. Real nice play. All right, let's go with uh, 13.53. All right, facing a two tight end set. Chidoze right in the middle here. Really good pass protection for yours. I mean, this is just an easy pitch and catch. Now we get a good angle of this. <laughs> yeah, got three guys blocking him. Not really anything you can do there, right? All 
All right. Oops. Let's check out this run play here. Again, Chidoze right in the middle. Minimal gain on the play, maybe three yards. Yeah. So let's check this out. Again, number 10. I wonder if Chidoze is going to be wearing number 10 at CU too. I mean, Weaver's gone. But again, he holds his ground, and I like this play. He's moving over, creating chaos. Getting in there for the tackle. A little slippery. Now we got third and one. Let's see what happens here. I think this is another run play, if I remember correctly. Oh, bummer. They got it. Yeah, that was uh, blocked really well by Texas. Let's go 16-26. And Chidoze is over here. First and 10 situation. Kind of out of the action there on this play. There he is right in the middle. But again, I'm still pretty impressed how he's able to just hold his ground being pushed by two guys. All right, we'll go to the next play here. Another draw play, and look how he gets off the defender. Helping wrap up the ta uh, the tackle right there. Getting himself involved. But I, I think he does a pretty good job. Like One of the things that I picked up on going through this last night is that uh, I think he does a pretty good job most of the time on, of identifying uh, what the play is and what's going on. It allows him to kind of, uh, you know, be one of those guys that can tackle down a, a a guy catching the ball, moving up field, still keeps himself within the play. Third down here, nice little pass rush, helping collapse the pocket. This leads to a sack. I think I showed this at the end of the last video because I wanted to show some some highlights. And uh, everybody did a really good job here on this third down. Here he is. And see what happens when he's only facing one guy. Like notice that that he's getting um he's getting pressure on yours. He's helping collapse that pocket, right? Maybe they should have rushed for him more often. Maybe they would have won. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. 1907. All right, we got a two back set with Worthy in motion. And uh, man, this is. Oh, wow, Houston did a really good job of of defending this because it looked like for a minute there that with that uh, pulling guard, was it a guard, that he had some space. But yeah, the, the center just kind of tries to cut block him or chop block him or whatever, diving at his legs, trying to take him out there. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out about this is how well he keeps his balance, keeps himself in on the play. And again, understanding where this whole play is going, his awareness, he's right up in there to make the tackle or help clean up the tackle, but he continues to push that, that play outside where his guys are. I mean, look, shaking his head. He knows that he was uh, awesome on that play. I mean, let's watch that one again. See, so center snaps it, goes right for his legs. He's like, nah, man, throwing you down to the ground. <laughs> now I'm going to get in here and make the tackle. 
But the, yeah, this is like real impressive stuff. Like, don't you guys think this is a, a type of defender that that we haven't had on the on the defensive line this past year? Let's see what else we got. Second and nine. This should be another running play. Right there in the middle. Stuff, man. Gain of like two, two and a half. But a lot of like when I was watching this whole thing, like a lot of their success came Texas did on like doing runs that were going outside. And I don't think that's a coincidence because I, I think Chidoze was doing a real good job of of plugging up the middle. I mean, look at that. Just stands him up. There's just nothing there. The other other guys did a really good job as well. So 93 getting off his block. That's just real solid stuff. But yeah, most of their successful runs were ones that were designed to go outside or were bounced outside. And I think we got a pass play here. Not much there from a, a pass rush standpoint. But it's kind of one of those situations where you want to keep everything in front of you. I think they drop eight back, right? Seven back. Bring a fourth lineman. But I also want to say, too, like one thing that I noticed um, when I was looking at this film compared to like when I was looking at recently our defense against Oregon or our defense against uh, UCLA, you know, a, a lot of the times. Uh, the, the middle was wide open. If we didn't have like a spy or anything like that, our de our defensive linemen were really moved off their spots, and it it allowed not only nice throwing lanes for the quarterback, but uh, throw or running lanes for the quarterback if they wanted to move upfield themselves. And so, uh, yeah, Chidoze like on some of these doesn't get like an Aaron Donald pass rush or whatever uh, dealing with this ankle injury. But uh, you know, what, what, one thing that I like is that he's not giving up ground to where Ewers has these huge holes to run right up the middle or anything like that. He still does have to throw the ball. Yeah, this is a nice little blitz play, and they're able to get the sack. And I love that. It was a really well executed blitz. And then, yeah, man, I love to see him pumped up. That's what I'm talking about. Love it, love it, love it. Let's see what else we got. Twenty five fifty five. Let's take a look here. What we got here? Fourth and two. Chidoze right here in the middle. While they're passing it, there's Chidoze getting his hand up, understanding what's going on. Oh, almost intercepted. <laughs> but you see how pumped they are, man. I love it. Again, like getting his hand up there. A little bit early contact, but you let that thing slide. Sorry. Sorry, A.D. Mitchell. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, 28-20. I marked this as a good play, whatever that means.
little play action fake. Oh, yeah, I think this was one that I already showed of him sniffing out this screen to Brooks. Good display of his uh, awareness of what's going on on the field. Yeah, I think I showed this at the end of part one as well. Like fighting through those blocks, understanding what's going on, and being there uh, to tackle him in the open field. I mean, that's that's great stuff. All right, let's see what else we got here. Thirty-two thirty. I think this is where Malik Murphy's in. Yeah, because Ewers got hurt. We got Chidoze right here in the middle. And this is where they try and run the ball a lot inside. They don't really have a lot of success doing it. But good job on on Brooks being able to fall forward there. Um, that that should have been a play that, that went for a lot less, in my opinion. But again, has to bounce it out over here. See, he should have been down like a yard or two before that. Well, pass rush, not much there. Incomplete. Is there a penalty or something? Yeah, these should be the last few plays. It's Chidoze right over here. Look, holding his ground. Again, they have to bounce it outside. That is where they found success in their running game this game. So the fact that, hey, they weren't finding their success on these interior runs it probably has to do something with Chidoze. Maybe it has to do a little bit with that 3-3. Three, three. Or that three two six defense they were running. All right, I think we got like one more play. It's like kind of interesting. Let me see here. Thirty five oh nine. Got a run play here. Oh man, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, this is really well executed by Texas. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice run, right there. Oh yeah, you see how they're all this attention, man. They're putting towards making sure Ch Chidoze is locked up. They got two guys on him right there, man. But anyways, um, like. Chidoze, like I said, big time upgrade for us, um, especially in the the run defending category. Graded out seventy seven point five. That's that's very very good. Uh, he had a, a really great overall grade here uh, this past year in the Big Twelve. If you want to look at his like individual grades, um, you know he graded out pretty well. Um, very consistent throughout his entire season this past year against all these opponents strangely enough didn't grade out that well against utsa but hey um did did very very well in the big 12 and i would imagine that he's in for another very good year this year uh, maybe even a better one maybe even a better one because uh, you know you're not gonna have, face an offensive line in my opinion the likes of texas again but hey this is nice to see we open up big 12 play against baylor he gave baylor uh some some difficulty no doubt again on the year let's see he had 18 tackles seven more assist tackles i love that 19 stops what's a stop this is when you're making a play to uh, like a tackle to end a drive on a third or fourth down 19 of those that's awesome especially coming from a nose tackle position that is impressive stuff no penalties either.
well, in coverage. It's interesting. Where's the penalties for the anyways, but yeah, um, it, and it's going to be interesting to see like where we put him at. I don't think you'll see him play like a, like that nose tackle position, like right over the center. Like we saw him play at Houston. I'm wondering if he might be more aligned to that, like, um, lining up more so over the B gap. I don't know. We're just going to have to see where they put him. Maybe instead of that zero tech, they have him at like a one. Uh, lining him out a little bit more outside. Uh, I, I think we'll have two interior linemen, and then we'll have the you know the two edges. Now, will those edges have their hand in the ground? Uh, maybe one of them will. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. But hopefully, again, we get uh, some news about the defensive coordinator here at some point, and then we can start diving into, um, you know what what kind of scheme these guys are going to be fitting into. All right, let me get to some of your comments. I'm going to scroll up here really quick. Dex saying he's 310 now. Wow, okay. I believe it because he does not look 295, man. No way, no way. So we need some size on that line. Anquan Barnes, right? He's a, a 315. Tarnian Carter's over 300 pounds, right? D-line is going to be improved. <laughs> Today's Friday. Saul Gold saying, I I don't really value this film. Clearly, his presence requires a double team, even from a stout offensive line like Texas. He's clearly the best on their defense by far. Yes, he required a ton of attention. Um, and that's why it's like, yeah, like not some of this stuff, some of his snaps that are like mundane, but the attention being given to him uh, to create that, you know, mundane play or whatever, it is not, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the fact that he requires a lot of attention from their offensive line is a very good sign. <laughs> very good sign. You're, you're, you're totally right about that solid, but yeah, he's again, look at him like a point guard setting up other guys to get sacks, get tackles for loss to get their points. So to speak. <laughs> made some of these comments yeah if you're taking a double team 75 percent of the time you're a beast wonderfully said solid gold he said in his twitter space he'll be wearing 99 isn't that shane coke's number interesting shane coke's is going to zero <laughs> did, did coach prime change up his uh his zero thing man that's funny Man above, good to see you. Lots of haters on the last live, but they should uh, be here now. <laughs> Apparently, they're not delusional and fall all things to you. <laughs> I hate her, Man, it's so funny that, uh, man, Big 12 fans are going to learn to hate us real quick, man. Uh, it's it's going to be fun once they start to get to know us. Hopefully, I can find, um, you know, there are some Big 12 guys that I got to collaborate with, but hopefully I can find more as well. What's up, CU Buffs Dynasty? How are you doing today? William Berry, I'm just hoping he stays stretched because he's huge and very strong. He has to stay limber and tight. Yoga would be great for him. And yeah, and stay hydrated, especially out here in altitude where you know your muscles can cramp up and, and all that a little bit quicker than if you're at sea level. So hydration, very, very important if you're an athlete, even more important if you're an athlete in altitude. <laughs> did i hit six 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 subs man i gotta get off that number man uh, we need bishop in here to pray for the channel man yeah we don't have linebackers for the three three five like what houston was running i think we definitely need to be doing or running another four two five like we did this past year and um yeah and then if they're in situations where they're just running two wide receivers out there, like a, like an 11 personnel or whatever. Let's run a four, three. Yeah, we definitely need to be rushing four, though. I agree with y'all. Yes. He played against a lot of teams on our schedule already familiar with what it takes to, 
play in the Big 12 to be successful, to win. So, um, yeah, I, I think he's a great addition. Oh, 97. You said he's going to wear 97. But, yeah, I think, like, right now, how I look at our starting defensive line, Chidoze in there, Tarian Carter. Um, let's see. And then B.J. Green. And then, like, Sam Okunwoa or Keaton Wade, I guess, kind of depending on how they want to do things. But that's, like, a really nice five with, like, a rotational edge. And I think uh, Keaton Wade, he can play a little bit of inside, too. So if you want to put him at inside linebacker, depending on what's going on, you can do that as well. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. I got to get out of here. I got to get back to it. But thank you so much for uh, tuning in to part two of this uh, film session of Chidoze Wonkwo. I'll, I'll try to get one of these film sessions out every week or so. This is a lot of fun for me, just getting a closer look at all of our players that, that we brought in, kind of seeing what they can do on film and how they stacked up against Big 12 competition. So uh, please hit that like and consider subscribing if uh, you, know, you kind of like this thing. And um, I will be back later at some point. And y'all have a wonderful uh, early start to your weekend, hopefully, and Scobuffs. Buffs.